Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley with Haley Stitches, and today you're watching my ninth floss tube. It's been a few weeks since I've done a floss tube, so I have a lot to show you guys. I only have one stitching project really to show you, but I am working on a lot of other things that I think you'll like as well. That was Pepper, my cat, my youngest cat. <laughs> She's in here with me right now. I shut the door in case there's any noise out there. So we'll see how rambunctious she gets. I might have to kick her out. <laughs> um, but I have a lot of things to show you guys today. So let's jump right in. So the first thing I wanna show you is the cross stitch project that I've been working on. So this is Flea Market Flowers. I'm sure you all have seen the stitch along with Fat Quarter Shop. So I am working on this. I did my own colors for this project. Um, I kept a few of them, but I really changed the color palette and I think it's turning out really nice. So I will show you all what that looks like. Um, I did not iron this, so it's gonna be a little bumpy because of the hoop, but that's okay. So this is how far I've gotten. I am definitely a little bit behind, but it seems to be stitching up pretty quickly when I'm able to sit down and work on it. So this is what I have done here. And you can see the colors are quite a bit different than the ones that it calls for. So I'm going for like a purple and pink color scheme. So this is what I've got. And I am stitching this on just an 18 count white Ada. And I'll show you guys all of the colors. So I showed you last time but i'll show you again because i know it's been a while um i am moving away from bi-weekly floss tubes and going more towards one every three or four weeks just because i've been noticing that i haven't been getting enough p <laughs> okay my cat just got into something so i'm gonna kick her out real quick <laughs> i am gonna start moving away from the bi-weekly floss tubes and go more towards every three weeks or every four weeks. So I know a lot of you guys are here because you like watching my floss tube. So I just want to make sure that I'm transparent with my schedule for that. I am going to be incorporating more other like cross stitch and quilting videos. So if you have an interest with that, I hope that you stick around and watch those too. Um, but I'm always posting when my floss tube will be up on my Instagram at Haley Stitches if you want to stay in touch there. Otherwise, you can turn on the bell notification and you can get notified when I post a new video and see if it's a floss tube if you want to just watch the floss tubes. So these are the colors that I picked out. Um, I will put them all in the description and on my blog post so that if you have an interest in doing the same color palette as me, you can. And I'm really, really enjoying this floss keeper. It is so easy to pull the strand of thread out and it's really, really fast. The only thing is that I did cut the threads a little bit shorter than I'm used to working with. Um, I usually work with pretty long <laughs> thread. So I am having to re-thread my needle pretty often, but it's not that big of a deal because putting them on the floss keeper like this makes it really, really easy to pull out a new thread. So I'm really enjoying that. It's actually it's like super, super cute too. So I'm going to keep using this for other projects. Um, so that is my colors. So that is really the only project that I'm working on right now. Um, I'm trying to stay pretty monogamous with this one because I want to get some good progress because I really like it and I want to be able to frame it and hang it up. So uh, like I said, I'm a little bit behind with the stitch along, but I'm hoping to get this finished in July and then jump back into some of my other projects. I also need to get caught up with the serendipity stitch along. Um, the last release just came out. So I am like two rows behind. So I need to catch up with that. I haven't worked on that either. Um, Mania just kind of threw me for a loop, I guess. I started all these new starts and then I kind of uh, lost track of the stuff that I was working on. So I'm getting back on track and hopefully I'll have a lot more stitching to show you all <laughs> next time. Um, but speaking of serendipity, I wanted to show you guys my progress on the quilt. So I did get back onto um, 
putting the quilt together. So I'm very behind on the quilt, like I've said several times. I think the last or one of the last releases for the quilt just came out and I am only on the second row. So I'm gonna show you guys the first row that I've shown before and then also the second row that I just finished yesterday. And then I'm about halfway through the third row. So I want to show you guys that. Um, here is the first row all complete. Let's see. So these cute blocks and it's exactly the same as the cross stitch if you've seen the cross stitch and I did buy the quilt kit so I have everything that I need for the uh, quilt top and I also bought the backing and the quilt kit you can see it right there and it's a really really nice box um, I'm definitely gonna purchase another quilt kit if they come out with another one for their quilt along next year. I just really like how everything is all together. And then this is the second row of the quilt that I just finished. So it's a bunch of flying geese. And uh, these fabrics are super, super cute. My husband really likes the green, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, the green one, there's little bumblebees in here. <laughs> and he, he always comes when I finish a row and he picks out what his favorite things are. And um, his favorite one so far is the green fabric with the bees. And this fabric line is called Springbrook by Corey Yoder. And it is still available everywhere. I have a charm pack, uh, two charm packs of this fabric as well that came with a sew sampler box. Um, I forget what month it was. I think it was March or April. So I am going to do a little, I'm not going to do the pattern that it called for, but I am going to do like a little beginner kind of quilt um, and I'll have a video about that up eventually <laughs> but I'm excited for that I love working with charm squares they're like so easy to work with and it comes together so quickly they're like probably one of my favorite pre-cuts um, I've worked let's see I haven't done the mini charms I haven't done the honey buns or the jolly bars um, but I have worked with layer cakes and charm squares and uh, jelly rolls. And I like all of them a lot, um, but I think my favorite are the five inch squares. They seem to be like the easiest and fastest to work with. Um, I don't know if you guys have like a preference with that or a favorite. I know a lot of people really like the jelly roll strips. Um, I just haven't found a lot of patterns that use them, but I, you know, I would like to use them again. They're just, their lint is so messy with those. And I know that there's not much we can do about it, but that kind of turned me off the first time I used them. I actually, I couldn't find any elastic when I was first trying to make masks uh, at the beginning of last year. So I had to, I just purchased a jelly roll strip and used the strips to make um, the ties for the masks. And it was like lint everywhere and it was a little bit frustrating to work with, but I think you know, if I wasn't working with something so small, if I, was, if I was piecing them together to be bigger pieces, I think that I would probably like it a lot more. <laughs> okay, that was a huge tangent. Um, so that is the serendipity uh, quilt. And I just wanted to mention that for the flying geese, I use the foundation, um, what are these, foundation paper. So this is just like a pad of foundation paper. This is what it looks like. Oh, I hope you can see that. Yeah, this is what they look like. So you just follow the steps and then you get like perfect flying geese and it's two at a time, which is really nice. So I would never be able to probably do that with that much accuracy without these. So I'm really, really happy that I use these. I was, these were really the reason why I fell behind on the quilt along because I was really, really nervous to use these because I did not know what I was doing. Um, but then finally last week I just uh, like dove in and just tried it and I did mess up um, a couple of times but I watched uh, Kimberly's live stream and that helped a lot because I was able to watch what she does and it is a lot easier once you just get the hang of it so you just have to do it a couple times but then you get into your rhythm and it's a lot faster than when you're first learning how to do it. Um, it definitely takes longer than just doing flying geese like the traditional method, I think, but it's 
so much more accurate and I don't have like wonky angles and everything so I really enjoy using these and I'm probably going to continue to use these for flying geese. Um, the next row has the courthouse steps so let's see it's this paper pad so it's courthouse steps. I've never tried to make a courthouse step block. I can definitely see how these are going to be valuable to use with this block and I'm excited to try them. So yeah, I will, I'll come back and let you guys know what I think about these ones, but I do recommend these. I think that they make the piecing a lot easier, especially if you're just not super confident with flying geese like me. Um, it, it's a really good alternative. And honestly, I'm sure you're like, I really like, um, the pad because it has everything right here and it's like thinner paper but i'm pretty sure you could find something like that similar on the internet and just print them out at home if you want to go that route um i have no idea how expensive these are because they came with my quilt kit so i can't really speak if i'm going to purchase them again but i definitely see the value and i see why people want to use these and why kimberly developed them the next stitchy thing that I want to show you all is the most recent Stitch Quarterly. So if you have not gotten your Stitch Quarterly yet, you do not want it to be spoiled, um, skip ahead. You can look at the timestamps in my description and it'll just have like the next thing I'm going to talk about. So just click that and it'll skip over everything that I'm talking about for the Stitch Quarterly. Um, so go ahead and do that, otherwise I'm going to start talking about it right now. <laughs> So this is what the bag looks like. It is so cute. This is like my favorite, favorite bag already. <laughs> it has little sprinkles. It's like white with colorful sprinkles. And then the leather tag here, which is so cute. It just says fat quarter shop. But I love that. Um, I just really like the style. I think it looks really modern and fun. And I hope that they do more of these mesh bags because I really, really like them a lot. So... On the inside there's a lot of really good stuff in here um, I will start just with the pattern so this is what the pattern looks like it, it says hello summer and then it has like dripping popsicles and snow cones so I am not huge on seasonal patterns that are like in your face seasonal so clearly this one says hello summer so that's obviously summer um so i don't know if i'm gonna stitch this one or not it's really cute i really like the style i think the popsicles are really fun i just don't know if it's gonna be on my list to stitch anytime soon but i really i really like that <laughs> and then the floss that came with it let's see these colors here so some nice bright fun summery colors and it is dmc floss so i'll just add these to my stash if i'm not end up not doing the pattern um it is stitched on a navy ada so this is the same fabric that i'm stitching my serendipity on and it's just a navy 14 count ada by witchelt and it's an 11 inch by 12 and a quarter or 12 and three quarter inch cut of fabric. So a nice little small cut of fabric, which I appreciate. And it also comes with a needle. This is the John James size 26 needle. I love these needles. I'm excited that they sent the same kind again. I don't know if they always send the size 26 John James needle, but I really, really like working with these. So. I'm happy that I got another one. And then the needle minder, I'll just take it out because it's a little hard to see with the glare, but this needle minder is super, super adorable. It is um, an ice cream cone. And I love that, that is so perfect for summer. Super, super cute. And of course it matches the pattern. Um, they always have a needle minder that kind of goes with the theme. And then the last notion, are these cross stitch finishing dots so i do not know much about these i'm not totally sure i mean i know they're for finishing your project i'm guessing it's for when you like if you were to wrap your project around like a piece of cardboard or um not cardboard but like like foam board or like a sticky board without the sticky kind of then you can get your um, 
fabric to stick onto what you're finishing it to, but I'm not totally sure. So I'm hoping that they come out with a video kind of explaining how to use these. There might be one that already exists. I have not looked into it, but if you guys have any idea like how you would use these for a project, let me know. Cause I, <laughs> I think they're gonna be really helpful. I think they're really cool. There's like a huge stack of them. So it's gonna be, you know, I'm not gonna run out of them anytime soon. There's 240 dots in here, but I do just don't really know how to use them. So I would appreciate any advice on that. But yeah, so am I, you know, I was kind of going back and forth to think if I should join the Stitch Quarterly or not, because I have seen some of the patterns that I really love in the past and some that are kind of so-so. Like I said, I'm not huge on the like in-your-face seasonal ones. Um, so there was a Santa pattern um, last winter, and that would have been one that I probably wouldn't have stitched uh, just because of that. But the, the last one was like a spring pattern. And that was definitely not like in your face spring. So I like, appreciate that. So I wonder, uh, this is only my second one that I've gotten. So I'm curious if they, you know, how often they do the really, really seasonal ones and maybe not so seasonal. Um, but I think that it's totally worth it, even just for like the bag and the notions. I think that it is totally worth it because I think the price, like I would pay that price for just a new bag and a needle minder and like a fun notion every, you know, every few months. So that is why I decided ultimately to join the club. Um, and yeah, I mean this bag, <laughs> I just love this bag, it was so cute. So I'm excited to start using all of these notions and yeah i just like every time i get one i'm just so excited for the next one but i know i have to wait and then i forgot about it and then it showed up at my door and i was like oh yeah i'm a part of this club i love that <laughs> so that is everything i have as far as cross stitch um but i do have a couple more projects to show you guys so i hope that you stick around even if you're not into quilting or knitting. <laughs> um, so the next thing I wanna show you all is I got a quilt back from the Long Armor. So this is my greenhouse quilt. Um, you can see pictures of it on Instagram. I'll also try to show you a full, <laughs> the full quilt right now. It's gonna be a little bit hard to get it in frame. Um, but I got it back from the Long Armor. This is my first experience with the Long Armor. Um, I found a Long Armor here in Minneapolis and she was so amazing. <laughs> I let her know it was like my first time and I was like nervous about getting everything um, ready for her perfectly, but it turned out really, really good and the quilting is perfect. It's exactly what I wanted and I just love it. I have not trimmed off, I've not squared it up and done the binding yet. Um, so I'm just going to show you how it is and it's like raw state right now, um, but I will definitely show you all again once it's completely finished and I'll post some photos on my Instagram so you guys can see what the final product looks like. So I'm going to try to get this up <laughs> so you guys can see it a little bit better. So this is what the pattern looks like. It is called Greenhouse by Elizabeth Hartman. And the fabric I'm using is Folktale by Layla Boutique. So it's just some plants <laughs> and really cute. So we love house plants in our house. So this one I'm hoping to end up hanging in our living room. Um, I obviously need to finish it and then figure out the best way to hang it, which I have not decided yet, but the size is going to be really good. We have just a really big wall with nothing on it, like above our couch. Um, but let me get a little closer so you can see the quilting. Okay. So you can see it's kind of like an all over, um, it's not like a spiral, but you know, it kind of has that round feel. We were going back and forth on if we wanted a vertical pattern or something a little bit more round. Um, but we decided on this one and it just turned out really, really nice. And then this is the backing. So it's just kind of a chocolatey brown flower all over. And, um, yeah, I really, I really like it. The batting I chose was really lightweight too. It was like a warm and white, uh, hundred percent cotton. So yeah, I'm just super pleased with how this turned out. <laughs> 
So I'm really happy with how that turned out. I'm hoping to get it completely finished and bound this week. Um, I always do my binding by machine. I haven't learned how, I mean, I, I guess in my mind, I know how to do it by hand. I've just never chosen to do it that way. Um, I think the only time I would do binding by hand is if I wanted to do like a big stitch binding, which I am interested in doing, but I don't think it's going to be for this quilt. Um, I have a couple other quilts planned and coming up that I think that'd be really cute with. Um, I just ordered, what did I just order? I ordered Smoke and Rust by Layla Boutique. Um, I love that line. <laughs> it is really, really modern and the colors are like right up my alley. I'm not into super wild and loud colors. I really like the more muted tones. And that one is, uh, it's like gray and like burnt orange are the two most popular colors, I guess, in the line. So I'm really excited to use that. And then I also ordered a layer cake of Lilliput um, by, oh my gosh, I can't believe. <laughs> Um, Sharon Holland, I think is her name. Let me look it up real quick. I gotta look it up because I feel bad if I'm gonna say it wrong. I've I followed her on Instagram forever and I really love her patterns. So let me look it up. Otherwise, <laughs> get me upset. Okay, yeah. So Lilliput by Sharon Holland. Um, and that one is so fun. It has little like frogs and just fun little motifs and the colors are really, really gorgeous. It's like earthy toned. And I got a layer cake of that. So um, I have um, a couple videos coming up, just like beginner videos. And I'm going to use both of those fabrics to do that. And I'm really, really excited about those. Um, those are just going to be like little baby quilts though, because it takes me so long, <laughs> it takes me so long to finish like a big throw. So I'm trying to just pare it down to something a little bit more manageable. Um, we all know that this one took me like Oh uh, geez, <laughs> a really long time. Most of it was just because I chucked it away for a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I am hopefully gonna get this all finished this week and get some photos up on Instagram to share with you all. Um, so this was like the most exciting thing that I did. I went to go pick it up and I was just so happy. Um, I'm definitely gonna be using a lot of armor again when I have <laughs> another large project. Um, I've quilted a quilt like this size back back here i quilted both of those on my um my little singer over here and it was just so challenging and both of those are probably the same size as this one so i am definitely you know if it's going to be something that i'm going to use or have out in my living room i am definitely going to go to the long armor because it just saves me so much stress and like uh, and then it's not perfect and yeah the quilting on those are really beginner quilting i mean those are my first two quilts that i quilted though so the checkerboard one was a little bit easier because i just did like cross hatching diagonally and i was able to follow obviously the corners of the squares and then for this one up here i did straight line quilting which was really hard because there's no the the way that the quilt is constructed there's no real like straight um seams like that down you know what i'm saying like vertically on the quilt so it the, it's a little bit wavy. I wish I would have just chosen to do wavy lines. I think it would have looked a lot better, but I did straight and I gotta live with my decision. <laughs> I don't regret it. It was a really good learning experience, um, but I'm hoping that I will be able to get that a little bit more precise. And I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that my machine is super lightweight and like moves around when I'm wrestling a big quilt through it. So eventually when I upgrade, I'm hoping that the quilting will get a little bit better just because the machine quality is a little bit better. But obviously I just need to practice too. So another reason why I want to do a couple more baby quilts for practice is because I'll be able to practice the quilting and a baby quilt is a lot more manageable of a size to quilt on my little machine than like a, a large throw or even a twin. Like this one's a twin and that one is like a really large throw. Um, and this one is a really large throw too. This one's 60 by 70. So I just don't think I would have been able to wrestle this whole thing through my machine. Anyways, <laughs> the next thing that I have been working on, I will show you guys is, this is the package that it came in. So if you follow DMC on Instagram, you probably have seen these, but it is the 
my own filmmaking kits. So they chose like a bunch of mediums to make these kits for. So they have like embroidery and cross stitch, punch needle. This one's a knitting. They also have a couple crochet ones too. I'm probably missing something in there, but, oh, and macrame. Um, and I had my eye on these because they were like promoting them and I was like, that looks really cool. And then I'm an affiliate with DMC. Um, you might have seen like in my description, it says that some of the links in my description are affiliate links and I may earn a small commission if you purchase through the link. So that is basically what an affiliate is. I know a lot of people aren't really familiar and they don't really know like what that means. Um, but basically I signed up with DMC and said that I, Haley Stitches, wanted to be an affiliate. So what that gave me is access to be able to post links that have like a unique tag in them so that when someone clicks on it and buys something, then DMC knows like, hey, Haley referred them to us and then I get a small commission. Um, so that is what that means. And there's no extra cost to you if you purchase through it. Um, it just gives me a little bit of a commission to help me be able to support myself um, doing all of <laughs> these videos and some stuff over on my blog. So. Anyways, that's a long way to say that I'm a DMC affiliate. And then they reached out and wanted to send me a kit um, as like a celebration because they're launching a new product. So I didn't know what kit I was getting, but I ended up getting the knitting kit. So it's a cushion, um, a little pillow. Let's see if I can focus on that, yep. So a little pillow and I, am, I have not done a knitting project in like well over a year. So I was so excited to get it started. Um, I got a little bit of progress, but definitely not as much as I wanted. So let me pull it up over here. Okay, so usually I knit with circle needles, but obviously this is like a beginner kit. So they gave me some straight needles and I have, I just have uh, this much started here. So a little, um, stockinette stitch I guess I'll show it this way so a stockinette stitch here and then like a moss stitch up here so this is the bottom of the pillow and then I'm working my way up um so that's how much I have there but the kits are really cool because it comes with like literally everything that you need so even if you have zero experience doing any of those crafts it'll give you like everything that you need in order to finish the project and I love it because sometimes like with beginner kits it's almost it's almost too focused on the fact of like you're learning something and then but the end result is not going to be something that you're actually going to use or put in your house dmc did a really good job of like choosing like nice modern patterns something that is going to fit into your decor so that is what i really like about this but it came with this little um, guide and it has all of the instructions and then it also came with it was like a darning needle to finish, um, a small crochet hook, uh, probably for the fringe. I don't know. I haven't looked at the, I haven't looked at the instructions all the way through yet. And it also came with a bunch of stitch markers. So it has everything that you need and an extra skein here. So I am like really excited to be working on that. Usually what I used to do was knit on my commute to work because I, uh, just take the bus cause I live close to my job. Um, but and now I'm not doing that. I'm just working from home. So I really have lost the knitting time that I used to have, but that's okay. I can't really complain about that. But um, when I'm home, I really like to either quilt because you obviously can't do that on the go or cross stitch. I find cross stitching like at home a lot easier than it is to do when I'm out and about. Um, knitting is great because you can just take it with you really wherever. It doesn't take up a lot of room unless you're making like a big blanket or something, but this, I could, at this size, I easily could bring this with me and get a lot of progress done. So I'm hoping to carve some time out to get that. That's gonna be like a long haul project for sure. Um, but I'm really excited about that. It's it's so funny, cause once you, if, once you like don't do a craft for a while and you pick it up again, it is like riding a bike. You just totally fall back into it. And the, when I was working on it, I was like, oh, like I miss doing this. I wish I would do it more often because I really, really love knitting and if you're a cross stitcher and you have not tried knitting or crocheting i love crocheting too i highly highly recommend trying it because it is 
just like it's funny because the kids are like meditative kids but it's really that's really like what it is you can focus on like other things you don't even really have to be paying attention to what you're doing you just crochet and knit and it's like so soothing I really really like it um so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna link those in the description below and again it is an affiliate link so if you purchase something through the link I'll get a small commission um feel free to use the link or not <laughs> but uh yeah there it's just really cool you can look at them on their Instagram too um they have like photos of all the options and everything so I really want to try the punch needle too so i'm probably going to purchase a kit for the punch needle because i've never tried punch needle and it looks like something i'd really like so i'm thinking about purchasing a punch needle kit so i can try that at some point as well i did get a couple of fun things from fact butter shop um i won't show you the fabric so <laughs> i just took a little break and then i saw that my shipment of fabric that i was just talking about came um but i'll show you that eventually once I get it into a quilt, but I did order the cross stitch journal. Um, it's so funny because when I first started cross stitching, I was like, oh, I'll never need this because I'll never have that many projects going on at one time because you can fill it in. Um, you can fill in like your number of projects here. And I was like, oh, that'll never happen. And then here I am with like a huge stack of like cross stitch whips. So I'm really excited to start using this. Um, if you haven't seen it before, it's basically just a little journal where you can keep track of your projects. So you can put the pattern name designer, your start date, your end date, um, the fabric you're stitching on, your time tracker, which I'm, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna use that part or not. Um, and then like your floss and any notes that you have. So it will be helpful for when I'm like picking up a project that I haven't touched in a while. And then I also got these pens to go with it. Um, it's uh, be in my bonnet planner pens. So these are by Lori Holt and I don't have any colorful pens like this I just saw these and thought that they would be a fun way to Not really write in this one because I'll probably just use a pen for this, but I really enjoy um, Like planning things in my planner and I these will be fun to make it a little bit more colorful. So I'm excited about that um, but Yeah, that is it um for my quilting and projects and everything. One more thing I did want to show you guys real quick is my fabric storage. So these containers were like on back order with the container store for a really long time. Um, I first bought them, it must have been summer of last year, and they weren't available for delivery for a while. And then I was cleaning out <laughs> my project closet and I realized that I needed it more and I finally looked and then they were available for delivery so I got a couple more and this is what they look like so it's basically just a big storage container so it has a lid on it with a little lip so you can stack them on top of each other which is what I do and then the container is like this big this is I think either the large or the extra large I'll put it in the description but what I do is I will wrap my yardage of fabric on a comic book card and then place it in here. Um, I don't have like big shelves or anything out in the open. What I have are shelves in my closet. So it fits perfectly to be able to stack these on top of each other. Um, the one on the bottom is just filled with like notions and stuff and then the one on the top actually has my fabric folded in it So I'll show you like an example of what that looks like So this is one I have two in there right now and this is one of them So you can see my fabric is wrapped around the comic book boards and then I'm able to just write on the board the color on the side So this is what they are looking like um, I also have one specifically just for my pre-cuts um, for my pre-cuts and then I have a couple of them just filled with like miscellaneous craft stuff and then one has all of my knitting and crochet stuff um, so yeah that seems to be working for me really well I will one day put like I don't know I'm either going to make a video about how to actually like fold them and make them look like this there are like a lot of videos out there about that um, or I'm just gonna do like a sewing room studio tour <laughs> to show you guys like how I organize everything and what that looks like in my space. Uh, my space here is just like a, sp a small spare bedroom um, and I use it for my 
home office and also my sewing stuff. So what's over here is also kind of over here. And this is like my daily job stuff over here. And then over here is my sewing. And then I have like a, just a bedroom closet over here that we put like make shelf, make shift shelves in where I'm able to store all my stuff and that's working really nicely right now. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff out on a daily basis. One, because I would get distracted trying to work and then also have like my sewing stuff out and two, because my cats get into everything. So we really, <laughs> I can't have like jars with like little things in them and like cute stuff. I have to make it a little bit more practical. Um, and I think a lot of you guys can probably relate to that where you don't have a space where you can really display all of your quilting things and notions. You have to kind of clean it up, especially if you're working in like a common space of your home. Um, I'm really lucky to have this whole room to myself for now. <laughs> and um, yeah, I know a lot of people don't even have that. So I would like to show some kind of storage solutions that have worked for me in a smaller space um, and especially my storage in my closet because I think that's what a lot of people work out of is just a spare closet in their home with all their stuff so that video will come out at some point um i have wanted to hang up my gallery wall which i know i talked about a long time ago but for today's video i just put my blanket ladder over here and we'll get to that at some point um but i was wanting to do that before i make the studio tour video but we'll see when it happens um yeah so you guys <laughs> i feel like i was talking so fast this whole video um but that is like everything everything that i have been working on for the past month um so i was really happy to share that all with you i am gonna have a lot more cross stitch stuff coming up so i am hoping that i'll have more cross stitch things for you guys uh, next time we'll expect the next floss tube to probably be in about a month so maybe three or four weeks um but a lot of fun like quilting and cross stitch videos in between so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more blast tubes and cross stitch and quilting videos please subscribe to my channel it really means a lot to me when you guys subscribe um otherwise i will see you all next time bye